praise the Lord and good morning this uh, beautiful Tuesday morning we are saying of this day that this is the day the Lord has made and today we are rejoicing and we are glad in this day in the mighty name of Jesus how are you doing how are you since uh, we were last year on Friday for the 10 o'clock broadcast I trust you had a great time in your respective churches and that you have begun your week well we bless the Lord and we glorify God for keeping us and sustaining us in Jesus' name. Uh, we, we begin our sessions for this week, this morning, Tuesday to Friday at 10 o'clock. And I know that we are in for a great time. The man of God continues to speak about hearing uh, the voice of God. And that's what he was doing even last week. And uh, kindly, if you've not yet listened, and even if you have, uh, just purpose to go back and listen to this uh, series where we are getting enlightened on uh, hearing the voice of God. And I believe you are making it your daily confession that you are hearing the voice of God and that you hear it clearly, you hear it even pertaining every area of your life in Jesus' name because God is guiding us and directing us in the mighty name of Jesus. And so once again, I want to welcome us. Also remember the morning dew begins at 530 uh, to 6.30 this week I am taking the morning dew uh, so it will be great that you join me at 5.30 where we do our prayers uh, uh, even before you begin your day and so once again I want to welcome us let's share the stream if you've not yet shared the stream why don't you share the stream why don't you tag a friend if you've not yet tagged a friend let them know that you are in for the teachings and that the Lord will minister to us. And so Agiwa Show, great seeing you in the house. Anna Wambua, it is a good morning. Pastor Jonathan Kakoi, uh, great seeing you. And uh, uh, thank you for allowing Pastor Winnie in church on Sunday. We had a great time with her on Sunday. And we thank God for what is happening in the Joska Church. And so Pastor Kakoi, uh, God bless you. And welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. The Lord is good and he deserves every praise. And he deserves all the honor, Bishop Edward Wafula. Good to see you in the house, man of God. We are grateful to the Lord for you. And we are looking forward uh, to see you tomorrow. The flyers are already out, even as far as the midweek service. Uh, that's on Wednesday tomorrow. We will be having our midweek service. And we thank God for his servant, uh, Bishop Edward Wafula, who will be with us tomorrow. Uh, in Jesus name and so once again I want to welcome us all Alice Kitova and Karibu Sana and so let's share the stream uh, let's share the stream we are uh, we are already at 33 shares only let's do better than that kindly share the stream if you've not yet shared tag a friend let them know that the teachings are on and they're able to listen to them now or even later depending on one's schedule and so we are getting ready to listen to to the word and also declare psalms 91 uh, remember we are on facebook uh, reverend tomo Cholis page and also believers walk of faith church page and also we are on youtube so whichever platform is okay with you you can listen to, to this word from there and so karibuni sana martin mulongo great seeing you in the house gilbert it is a good morning to you and welcome welcome to the house of the lord this morning let's get to psalms 91 let's put our faith in this word and in god in matters of our preservation and protection so kindly declare this word with me i dwell in the secret place of the most high and i abide under the shadow of the almighty this morning i say of the lord you are my refuge my fortress my god in you i put in my trust the lord delivers me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence he covers me with his feathers under his wings i take refuge his truth which is the word of god is my shield and my buckler in jesus name i'm not afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that waketh, walketh in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday in Jesus' name. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me in Jesus' name. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked in the name of Jesus. I've made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place. And therefore, by faith, I declare no weapon, uh, no evil shall befall me, neither shall.
a long satisfied life and he shows me his salvation in jesus mighty name and i speak this word in faith over my spouse my children my brothers and sisters and their families my parents loved ones and colleagues we speak this word in faith over their lives in the name of jesus christ and we declare that uh, the lord delivers them from any manner of harm or trouble that the enemy may have crafted on their parts this day or this week in the name of jesus no weapon formed against them shall prosper and we and we condemn every tongue that raises against them in judgment in jesus name we declare a long satisfied life even in the remaining days of october a long healthy satisfied life is their portion in jesus name and if you believe that say amen and amen so once again i want to welcome us uh, we are getting ready to listen to the word of god uh, remember it is a teaching session kindly let's share the stream tag a friend let them know that we are ready to listen to the word we continue with hearing the voice of God. So welcome, and let's get to listen to this in Jesus' name. Amen. up their hands this next song we're about to testify that we we see how far the Lord has brought us we see how far Lord you have brought us King of Glory we thank you oh Lord we are so grateful King of Glory Hallelujah. 
you have won the victory oh jesus hallelujah you have won it all for me sing with me say hallelujah hallelujah you have won you have won the victory could not hold you down cause you are Lord you are the risen King you are seated you are seated seated in majesty oh Lord cause you not hold you down cause you are you are the reason my God you are seated you are seated yeah. oh Lord cause you are uh, the day the Lord has made we are rejoicing and we are glad in this day thank you for being part of our teaching broadcast today thank you for being part of our teaching broadcast today we thank god for we thank god for you that is already tuned in Uh, that's already tuned in for the teaching. God bless you. Those of you that have already shared the stream, uh, as Santeni Sana, if you have not shared the stream, please do share the stream. As uh, Kathy earlier said, we have been learning in our 10 a.m. teaching broadcast on a very important topic on hearing the voice of God. And uh, I cannot even overemphasize how important it is for us to hear God's, God's voice. Patrick Ranson, thank you for sharing the stream. Uh, Tom Bovey, thank you for sharing the stream. All of you, keep sharing the stream. We are going to pray. And this week, starting from today, I am going to be teaching on how you train your spirit to hear God's voice. The human spirit has to be trained to hear God's voice. And there is a way you can begin to train your spirit to hear the voice of God. And that's what you're going to be talking about um, uh, this week. Agiwashu, thank you for saying that you're sharing more. Uh, all of us keep sharing the stream. And remember, tomorrow is Wednesday. Just as you've seen the poster, is our midweek service. And our midweek service is normally powerful. We get the word of God. And that service is as important to us as a Sunday services. And so tomorrow we have God's servant, our pastor Edward Wafula. It's such a great, great blessing. Uh, if you have not heard Pastor Wafula teach, you cannot afford to miss tomorrow. It's going to be happening tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. here at the Believer's Oak of Faith Church. And so make plans to make sure that you don't miss our midweek service tomorrow praise the lord all right let's pray father in the name of the lord jesus christ we hallow your name for your kingdom has already come and the kingdom of god is in us righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit and lord we do submit to the anointing 
of the Holy Ghost, our teacher and our guide into all of God's truth. And I pray that the spirit of glory and of Christ would rest upon my life and rest upon the audience. I pray that I will decrease and this anointing will increase even uh, to take over everything that we do on this broadcast today. I pray that as the people hear the teaching of God's word, that there shall be a manifestation of the supernatural anointing right where they are. That if there be any that is sick and afflicted in their body, by the teaching of God's word, healing will happen. The sickness will leave. The disease will leave. The bondage will be broken. The confusion will leave their mind. The heaviness will depart. The yokes will be broken. As they sit under the anointed teaching of God's word, I pray there will be manifestation of the power and the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Holy Ghost, we honor you. Holy Ghost, we magnify you. This is a new week. I pray your blessing upon your people and their families and their jobs and their children and their homes. Bless their bread and bless their water, O oh God. As we study on hearing the voice of God, we thank you, Holy Spirit, because only you can take us to the place where human wisdom can never take us where talent cannot take us, intellect cannot take us to the glory and to the honor of God's name. Therefore, Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' precious name. And somebody said, Hallelujah. All right. The topic is hearing God's voice. And today, specifically, we are looking at Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14. That's where we begin on this subject of hearing God's voice. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14. The Bible says, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, in this same verse, I want us to look at the amplified version of Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14. And it says, but solid food is for full-grown men, mature men, for those whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice. Remember that. Senses and mental faculties that are trained by practice to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil and contrary either to divine or human law. Now, our senses can be trained by practice to distinguish and discriminate that which is God's voice and that which is not God's voice. Now, learning to hear God's voice is not automatic. It requires our senses being trained to the place where we can begin to distinguish and discriminate or discern this is the voice of God and this is not the voice of God. And that is absolutely important. I want us to do something we've been doing throughout this teaching and that's to make a confession and I believe that as we make this confession you are not just making this confession now but you are adapting this as one of your daily confessions and this is a confession we are making if you can you can join me in this confession uh, concerning hearing God's voice it says like this, I am a sheep of his pasture and I hear his voice. Now, that's what the Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And so my confession, your confession is I am a sheep of his pasture and I hear his voice. Don't forget that. I'm a sheep of his pasture 
and I hear his voice. The second confession we are making is from Matthew chapter 11 and verse 15. Matthew 11 and verse 15. Jesus said, He that has an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says unto the church. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. So our confession goes like this. I have hearing ears. I have hearing ears. You that is listening on this broadcast, you have hearing ears. Don't say ever again, I don't hear God. You have hearing ears. You hear God clearly. You hear God accurately. You hear God distinctly. You can discriminate and distinguish this is the voice of God. That's our confession. So you are the sheep of his pasture and you hear his voice. In actual fact, you are hearing his voice now. You have hearing ears. Don't ever change that confession. Don't get to a place where you begin to say, ah, but you know, I've been saying this confession and I hear nothing. No, stay with it. This is God's word. You have hearing ears. Doesn't matter what, you don't go by, by sight. You have hearing ears. But pastor, I don't hear God. That's what you're trying to fix. You have hearing ears. Glory be to God. You have hearing ears in Jesus' name. Now, in John chapter 10 and verse 4, John chapter 10 and verse 4, the Bible says, And he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And so, our third confession is, I know the voice of God. I'm talking to you this morning, by faith you know his voice. By faith you know his voice. By faith you can distinguish, this is God's voice, and this is the stranger's voice that I should not follow. Those of you that are at a crossroad, and you have important decisions to make, you can hear his voice. I speak that by faith. Those of you that are in a place where you need to know the direction or the path you need to make concerning your life or your career or business or whatever that decision may entail, you are hearing his voice. Amen. You are hearing God clearly, accurately. You know what to do. You know his voice. You are a sheep of his pasture. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21 says, And you shall hear the voice behind you say, This is the way you walk in it. And so, you will hear the voice behind you. And that voice will be saying, This is the way. You know what you need to do? You walk in it. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20, uh, 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way you walk in it and so receive clarity direction your ears you have hearing ears and you know the voice of god and you're the ship of his pasture and you know his voice you hear his voice and you have the faith to obey the voice of god glory be to god and so it's important never to change your confession from what you are what you are saying to get to a place where you say, I've heard people say, you know me, I don't hear God. You see now, that's exactly where your problem is. Because by your confession, you are already saying, I don't hear God. And that's speaking contrary to God's word. You are the sheep of his pasture. And you know what? And you hear the voice of God. Now, I want to show you as we begin to look at uh, training your spirit to hear God's voice. I want us to look at a scripture in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. And you're going to read the scripture from the Amplified Version. This week, pay close attention to what you're going to learn. I'm going to be telling you some of the things you can begin to put into practice and develop an ear that can hear God clearly. 
it says in verse 1 in many separate revelations each of which set forth a portion of the truth and in different ways God spoke of old to our fathers in and by the prophets and so in verse 1 it says in different ways God spoke in different ways that's going to be important for our study God spoke it says in different ways now in verse 2 it says but in these last days he has spoken to us in the person of a son whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things also by and through whom he created the worlds and riches of space and the ages of time he made produce built operated and arranged them in order in other words in our days god has primarily spoken to us or he primarily speaks to us through the voice of his son jesus christ and that voice is a voice of his word remember in the teaching i've always said that the primary source of god's voice is the word that's if you want to hear god's voice that's where we begin to go what does the bible say that's the voice of god now i want you to know that the voice of god also comes to us in different ways and you have seen that it says that god spoke in different ways god spoke in different ways god spoke now the first thing that you we need to establish we're going to take some time is this question how does god speak to me how does god speak to me now i am saying me but that you should be asking yourself that question have you established the the, the ways in which god speaks to you and what are the different ways that the voice of god comes to us remember what i said and i'll keep saying this because that's absolutely important that the primary way that the voice of god comes to us is through the voice of his word that's the primary way the voice of god's word that's the main way his voice comes to us and so you cannot say i'm hearing voices and they are speaking contrary to the voice of god's word now the different ways god speaks to us different ways god speaks to us there are people that say i have never heard the audible voice of god and so to them god has never spoken to them because they are waiting to hear the audible voice of god now that's one of the ways god speaks to us through an audible voice and there could be somebody or people listening that have heard the audible voice of God. Now, majority of the people I talk to and interact with have never heard the audible voice of God. But also remember, whether audible or in a dream, God will never speak contrary to his word. And that's how you test whether the voice you're hearing is from God or is a seducing demon. Now, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 10 records a man that had the audible voice of God right from Genesis he had the audible voice of God and this is Adam Adam said I had the sound or I had your voice the New King James Version it talks about the voice I had your voice in the garden and so Adam here is acknowledging hearing God's voice. I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So Adam is one of the many examples we have in the Bible of people that had or have had the audible voice of God. Glory be to God. The audible voice of God. Another example is Samuel in the book of 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 1 going down. Samuel heard the audible voice of God. 
in first kings or not first samuel not first kings first samuel chapter 3 and verse 1 and the child eli and the child samuel ministered unto the lord before eli and the word of the lord was precious in those days and there was no open vision and it came to pass at that time that eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see and before the lamp of god went out in the temple of the lord where the ark of god was and samuel was laid down to sleep that the lord called samuel and he answered here am i and he went to eli and said here am i for you called me and eli said i call not lie down again and he went and lay down and the lord called yet again samuel and samuel arose and went to eli and said here i am for thou callest me and he answered i call not my son lie down again now samuel did not yet know the lord neither was the word of the lord revealed unto him and so this is where we begin to see about training your spirit to know the voice of god samuel is hearing god's voice but his spirit is not yet trained to be able to distinguish that this is the voice of god and so he can hear a voice but he has not yet learned to know that this or that is the voice of god or that is not the voice of god and so he rises from where he's laying down and he goes to eli and he says you know what you called me glory be to god and eli the bible says in verse um verse 8 and the lord god called the third time he arose and went to eli and said here i am for you called me and eli perceived that the lord had called the child and so eli begins to have a revelation that that god is speaking to this boy but this young man does not still does not have an understanding to know that this is the voice of god and so i'm talking to somebody that is tuned in this morning that is hearing god because remember everybody hears the voice of god the question is do you know that that is god speaking to you are you able to discern and distinguish that this is the voice of god and so uh, uh, samuel is hearing god's voice but he has not yet been trained praise the lord he has not yet been trained to be able to discern and distinguish that this is the voice of God. And so, the first thing that happens to Samuel is in verse 9. Eli said to Samuel, You go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times samuel samuel then samuel answered speak for thy servant heareth so what has happened to samuel samuel has been taught samuel has received a mentorship samuel has been instructed by his mentor li on how to discern this is god's voice and how to respond to it that's why he told the young boy now you go stand you go lay down but now when you hear that voice this is how you need to respond and that's why we are having this teaching because um we are going to be learning the whole of this week on how you get your spirit to a place where you can begin to hear clearly that this is the voice of god and so the first thing that Eli begins to teach this young boy is have an expectation. That's very important. Have an expectation. Now, you must expect to hear God. And I'm going to show you how you develop an expectation to hear God. Because I touched on this some time back last week on how you develop the expectation to hear the voice of God how do you develop that expectation you train your spirit to expect to hear god there are many people that wake up move around believers let me say that go about the whole day 
one day, one week, one year. They don't even have an expectation to hear the voice of God. So Eli begins to mentor Samuel and says, now you go lie down, but now when that voice comes, this is how you respond. And so Samuel is now in a place of expectation. He is ready. And there is a particular voice he is looking for. Now he is not looking for the voice of the dog barking outside. Now he is not looking for the voice of the baby crying in the other room. Now his options have narrowed down to that particular voice he has been hearing and he was not able to distinguish and to discern that that was the voice of God. He is in a place of expectation. How do you train your spirit to hear the voice of God? The first thing you must learn is begin to expect to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. Let your spirit, man, be in a place of expectation. Expect to hear God. I'm expecting to hear the voice of God. Now, the question somebody is asking, all right, pastor, then how do I get to a place of expectation to hear the voice of God. You see, this is what Eli told Samuel in verse 9 of 1 Samuel chapter 3. He said, this is what you're going to say. He says, speak, your servant is hearing. That is in the original King James Version. He says, speak, your servant is hearing. In the Amplified Version, it says, speak, Lord, your servant is listening now when you are listening you're attentive you're alert you're ready to hear that's expectation speak your servant is listening in other words i'm in a place of being attentive i want to hear what god is going to say hallelujah are you listening pushes you to a place of alertness you are alert you are expecting I'm expecting to hear what he's gonna say I'm waiting for the instruction I'm waiting to follow what he says I am listening we train ourselves to hear the voice of God by being in a place of perpetual expectation that I'm gonna hear the voice of God now I touched on this last week so let me go over that again one of the things that we must begin to do is learn the power or the importance of praying the prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry is what David prayed in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. This is going to put you in a place of expectation. You can't hear the voice of God unless you are expecting to hear God speak to you. Are you expecting God to speak to you concerning maybe you want to get married? That decision, are you expecting to hear the voice of God? Are you expecting to hear God concerning the direction of your life? Are you expecting to hear God concerning that business you are about to start? Or the relationship you want to get into? Or the career switch you want to make? Or even you want to join another church? Or you want to relocate to another city are you in a place of expecting our spirits must be trained to be in a place of perpetual expectation i am listening to god i'm in a place of listening i'm in a place of uh, readiness to hear what god is gonna say uh, that's where i am <laughs> i'm in a place of listening when is the last time you said i've been praying about this and this and so I am just going to take the next one week and just listen. I'll get into worship, but I'll not be in a hurry just to begin to say things. I say, God, here I am. I am just listening to you. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8, David prayed the prayer of inquiry. He says, And David inquired of the Lord, and he said, Shall I pursue these people that have taken his two wives and burnt the city of Ziklag with fire and they have taken off and they have totally destroyed the city and David and his men come back and they find the city on fire 
and their wives taken captive, then David prayed the prayer of inquiry. Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered and said, pursue. Now, when you pray like this, it puts you in a place of expectation. And so the first thing you need to know in training your spirit to hear God's voice is like you must be in a place of perpetual expectation. I said, I told you, many believers never expect to hear from God. So even when God speaks, because they were not expecting, they still can't tell that that is God. In Psalms 40 and verse 1, 40, Psalms 40 and verse 1, these are the words of David that help us in this thing about hearing the voice of God. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. We must get to a place where we do what this verse says, waiting patiently for the Lord. I have inquired, I am waiting, and this is what Eli told Samuel to do. He said, you go lie down exactly where you are, but now wait for that voice, patiently wait for that voice. And when the voice comes, now respond like this. This is how we train ourselves. I'm talking to you, if you are about to make an important decision, or if, even your everyday decisions, why don't you begin to say, Lord, I need to know your mind concerning this matter. I need to know what you think about uh, this particular thing. Lord, I am having this project. What, what is your mind about this? And wait. Don't be in a hurry and wait. Wait until you hear his voice concerning that particular thing. This is how you begin to train your spirit to discern and distinguish that which is the voice of God. You have to learn to do what? To wait. You are expecting. What is your mind, Lord? Should I take this direction? And you don't make a move until he communicates to you. I'm going to show you how God begins to bring his voice into your life and how you need to establish what is the primary way that God speaks to you. But for today, there are people that just need to hear that before you make that decision, probably you need to go before the Lord and take a few days and say this the next one week God I just want to know what is your mind and now speak to me and tell the Lord speak to me Eli told Samuel say like this speak your servant is listening why don't you also go before the Lord and say God speak to me concerning my fiancé I'm listening I am listening mambo until God confirms everything to you that it is green light you can move forward speak I am listening and so let your spirit be in a place of expectation to hear the voice of God now there is in the Bible Elijah that had trained his spirit to hear the, vo the, the voice of God very clearly we must get to a place where we are not easily distracted by other voices and neither are we in a hurry that we are patiently waiting just like Samuel was trained and mentored by Eli you lie down there don't make a move until he speaks and when and when you hear the voice this is how you respond speak Lord because your servant is listening and so the main thing today is are you in a place of expectation are you in a place do you expect to hear god maybe some of you you're hearing this for the first time only expect and mothers deliver if you're not expecting to hear from god most likely you will not hear his voice and also his voice might come to you but because you are not expecting anything you will miss the voice of god Glory be to God. I want to show you a, an example of a man that had trained his spirit 
and was expecting to hear the voice of God. And this man is Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 9. 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 9. And he came hither to a cave, Elijah, and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. They have thrown down the, your altars. So he's complaining. They have thrown down your altars. They have slain your prophets with a sword. I, even I only am left, and they seek to take away my life. And he said, you go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And the Bible says, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so, verse 13, when Elijah had it, and he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. The children of Israel have forsaken their covenant, thrown down your altar, slain thy prophets. I, even I, am only left, and they seek to take away my life. And the Bible says, And the Lord said unto him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you come, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. Now, the key thing that I want you to see here is that when Elijah was in that cave, so many noises came. The first noise, the Bible says in verse 11, a great and strong wind that tore the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces. That's a very big noise. That's a very huge sound. Elijah is in this cave and is waiting to hear from God and there comes this very huge noise like an earthquake. And the Bible says, even after this strong wind that tore the rocks, it says there came after the wind an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And then he says, after that fire, a still, small voice. Now, it says, and Elijah, verse 13, had it. Verse 13, Elijah had it. How can you hear a still, small voice in the midst of an earthquake? In the midst of rocks, mountains, splitting? strong winds all that kind of noise how can you be able to hear that still small voice the only answer to that is one here is a man that had trained and exercised his spiritual senses to the degree that even in the midst of such great noises he was able to pick out that which is the voice of god and the bible says he had it if he had not trained his spirit he would, have, he would have missed the voice of God and would have been drowned. That voice would have been drowned by many voices. And that is what is happening to most of us. And so he was in the cave. And I want you to say this. He's in the cave. He's expecting. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm introducing today. His posture is I'm expecting to hear God. I want you to go to the comment section and say from today, I expect to hear the voice of God. You must get to a place where you are expecting. Otherwise, if Elijah was not expecting, he would not even have known a voice came. The still small voice would have been drawn by the noise of the fire, would have been drawn by the noise of the earthquake, it would have been drawn by the noise of the strong wind. Be clear with me. I expect to hear his voice. I live in a state of constant expectation. 
to hear the voice of God. I'm expecting to hear that voice. I will pick his voice in the midst of many voices in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something about the voice of God? Remember this, my friends. God does not, God most of the time, his voice will not shout. It's always a still small voice. God doesn't shout and cause a drama when he's speaking. From today, I like your response, you people. From today, I am expecting to hear the voice of God. And so key number one into hearing God's voice is you must be in a place of expectation. Before you make that decision, let me say this before I stop for today. If you are here and you are about to make a decision or you are in a crossroad or you are in a relationship, you're just somewhere or there are some things going on around you that are not clear. They are a bit confusing. You, stay, you can't figure out exactly what is going on. This is what you need to do. And pay attention. Don't make a move. From today, because you're learning and you must put this into practice, go before the Lord and say, God, concerning this matter, speak to me. Then, be in a place of expectation. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you how God's voice begins when we're getting into a place of expectation that different ways the voice of God will begin to come to us. And that's what we're going to be learning tomorrow. But you must be in a place where you expect to hear the voice of God. Now, expect to hear God regarding your partner in life. In case you're listening to me and you're single with a desire to get married, this is what I want to tell you. From today, begin to say, Lord, speak to me concerning my spouse. If you're in a relationship, say, Lord, is this the man I should settle down with? Is this a lady <coughs> ordained for me? Speak to me. I am listening. Don't let your feelings overwhelm and drown the voice of God. Because I just told you that Elijah had trained his spirit to pick up that voice in the midst of many voices. Don't just be so madly in love until when God speaks you cannot hear. Just tell the Lord, is this the man? Is this a woman for me? I expect, speak to me. I want to know that. Maybe you want to um, get into ministry because you think uh, this is glamorous. You want to be called man of God. You look at the protocols of the men of God. You look at the uh, uh, at how the um, uh, the honor that accompanies men of God, and you have a desire to be a man of God. But before you do that, ask the Lord: Is this the direction that I need to make? Is this the path that you have ordained for me? And get into the place of expectation. Father, tell me about the nation of Kenya. I always pray that prayer especially even now that's one of the things that i pray i'm expecting to hear the voice of god concerning this nation concerning the direction where our government and our politics is going the bible says the holy ghost shall show you the things to come and so i am in a place of expectation with the rising cost of living in the nation with the thing the way things are going around I am already saying, Lord, what is it that I need to know that is going on in this nation so that I can be in a position to pray for the nation and intercede and also in a position to bring an encouragement to God's people and to tell them, you know, it shall be well. But I need to hear from God. I need to hear from God. Hallelujah. I need to hear from God. And so, is it your family? Is it your children? Is it your marriage? Is it your health? Is it your finances? Get into a place of expectation and say, Lord, speak to me concerning this matter. I am listening to you. I am ready to hear what you have to say. Put yourself in that place. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be like Elijah. 
even if other voices come don't move until you know that's the voice of god when your spirit is adequately trained you shall be able to pick up his voice in the midst of many voices the lord bless you and keep you and i hope that this word has brought encouragement in your heart this morning in the mighty name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, before we pray, I want us to do this, and we're going to be doing this this week. This is how we're going to be finishing our prayer. If you are listening, and there is a decision or something you need to hear God about, and you're afraid to share it, Maybe it's not very personal, but you're free to share it. If you can, go to the comment section and type like this. Lord, I need to hear you, maybe concerning my son. Or, Lord, speak to me concerning my marriage, or my business, or my career, or the ministry. If you can go and type that, as i finish i am going to mention your name and say lord can you uh, 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 can you manifest your voice concerning this person or concerning that person martin molongo that's what i'm gonna be doing you are saying lord speak to me concerning my family and my job and i want to stand in the in in the gap with you and I want to stand in faith with you, Martin, that you're going to hear the voice of God clearly, distinctly, and accurately. That which is going on in your family and regarding your job, God is going to speak to you. Now, you say how. That's why you need to tune in tomorrow. I'm going to show you how the voice of God comes to us. But for now, Martin Molongo, expect to hear God speaking to you concerning your family in jesus name is there anybody else online except martin all right kate nyawira you are saying lord speak to me concerning my children all right expect god to speak to you very clearly concerning your children concerning caro concerning pendo i know your children were with them in kilimani concerning those children God is going to cause you to know his voice and he's going to speak to you very clearly. You will know what you need to know concerning your children in Jesus' name. Lucy Marsh, good to see you. Lord, may you manifest yourself to me concerning my life and my children. Yes, Julius and Nyambu. Father, I, I release my faith with Lucy that she will hear your voice that it shall be so clear because that's our confession i hear god clearly accurately distinctly you as you speak to her concerning her life you will even show her the plan that you have for her life the days ahead as she stays in a place of expectancy she will hear the voice of god sheila doro good to see you you say lord speak to me concerning my family my job and my friends as you stay in the place of expectancy the voice of god shall become clear to you concerning that which you desire to know concerning your family your job and even those people that are in your circle as your friends in jesus precious name musau agnes god speak to me concerning my job and my family i see most of us we are talking about job family job family job family agnes musao now that you're in a place of expectancy you will hear the voice of god you say pastor how will i hear the voice of god that's what i'm going to be talking about tomorrow how god's voice comes to us and how we begin to train ourselves to know that this is the voice of god it shall come to pass to you agnes musao in jesus name lucy uh, 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 idwasi you say lord speak to me about my life and the way that I should go, I release my faith with you, Lucy. 
and it's good to see you in the house that god's voice is bringing clarity into your life i bless you in the name of jesus you will know clearly the direction you need to go in jesus name alice kitova concerning your family and your children and your grandchildren the lord jesus christ will cause his voice to be known to you in jesus mighty name patrick ransom lord please speak to me concerning my ministry in serving as praise and worship and in the translation the voice of god will become clear to you patrick and even to your wife sephora regarding not just your ministry but your life in the name of the lord jesus christ i bless you happiness kerubo i like that name happiness lord speak to me concerning my life and my family i told you most of us is our family and so god will begin to manifest his voice to you concerning your family uh in jesus name tom Bovey, lord speak to me concerning my children who are sitting for exams my son is also sitting for exams so we are together and my life as you stay in a place of expectation tune in from tomorrow at home i'm gonna show you step by step how the voice of god comes to us and you'll be able to know this is god's voice concerning my children and my life glory be to god hallelujah they will do well in jesus name winnie kakoi pastor you say lord speak to me concerning my calling yes stay in the place of expectation right now pastor winnie as you stay in that place it shall become very clear to you what your calling and your purpose is and god will show you even to the end of your ministry how he's gonna show you glory be to god that's what he spoke to about a uh, 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 soul Saul knew from the beginning what his calling was a light to the gentiles so shall it be in jesus name my friend pastor steve mutia good to see you sir yes this is my desire to hear god day by day concerning my ministry that's also my desire pastor to hear god even the next phase of my ministry i really need to hear god you see i'm not just teaching this is where i am i am right here myself concerning the next phase of my ministry that's who i am in jesus name glory be to god hallelujah i release my faith glory be to god hallelujah the lord bless you we must stop there all of us even those that are not able to type maybe because you're somewhere you can't you're just listening but you're already occupied god knows the desire of your heart and your prayer in jesus name tomorrow i shall continue to show you how the voice of god begins to come into our lives and how you need to establish in your own life that this is how god speaks to me once you have established for me this is how god speaks to me then we're going to show you how you grow in that area and how you train yourself so that going forward god may speak to you in many ways but you have established the primary way that the voice of god comes in jesus name well we have come to the end of our teaching today god bless each one of you that tune in here at the believers Walk of faith church our online church is a real church like the physical church that's how we take it so you are not lesser to me and pastor kathy than the people that come on sunday no there are people uh, that may not be able to be here on sunday like lucy duasi it's many years since we were together but here you are online getting blessed by god's word tom movie you're always tuned in glory be to god and so this we are having a real church here 
There are people following from Qatar and different places. We are having church, my friend. So, because it's church, everything we do in a physical gathering, we do online. Like, right now, if you're not born again, I want you to know that you can get born again here on Facebook and on YouTube. And you can receive Jesus Christ and he can come into your life. And so pray this prayer and say, Dear Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Amen. There is information on the screen if you have prayed the prayer to accept Jesus Christ into your life. Get in touch with us. You shall get some information and some guidance concerning your, the, the work of faith and the life that you have gotten into right now. It's also a great time, God's people, for us to worship the King of Kings with our finances. Listen to me, my friend. This is a real church. I said this is a real church. So the way you don't walk into a service empty-handed, purpose that when you tune in and to this service, that at the end of the teaching, having been ministered to spiritually, you'll also stand with us because we are, we, this online also has its own um, expenses, by the way. I have a people that assist in this media ministry and, um, and they are sustained through this media ministry. We are, I have people that offer all kinds of support. You are seeing me be, before this camera. But behind all these things you're seeing appearing, scriptures, whatever, there are people uh, that work diligently to make sure that we are able to transmit. And so support us with your finances and pray for us. Information on how you send in your offering and send in your tithe and you want to partner with this vision is appearing on the screen. And I pray and I speak blessing and grace upon you in Jesus' name <laughs> as you give. May the Lord honor your faith and honor your giving in Jesus' precious name. And God's people said, Amen. Remember tomorrow is going to be so important as I begin to show you the various ways the voice of God may come to you as you're waiting. People today have said, Lord, speak to me, speak to me. But God is not going to speak to us the same way. The way he speaks to you may be very different from the way he speaks to me. And so this week, that's what I'm teaching. And this is very close to my heart. That by the Friday, I am endeavoring by the grace of God that you will be able to have identified, oh, so this is how the voice of God comes to me. And how you grow in that area of your life. To the place where you'll be able to know instantly when the voice of God is coming to you. The Lord bless you, keep you, and cause his face to shine upon you. My name is Tom Ocelli and I want to remind you that we walk by faith and not by sight. And so no matter what is going on around you, don't be afraid. Only believe. I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. You're blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.